searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am, it's who I am You are perfect in all of your ways You are perfect in all of your ways You are perfect in all of your ways To us You are perfect His love so undeniable I can hardly speak Peace so unexplainable I, I can hardly think as you call me Deeper still as you call me Still as you call me Deeper still into love Love, love You're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are And I'm loved by you It's who I am It's who I am It's who I am It's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your Luke tells us that at a certain point in time, Jesus resolutely set his face to go to Jerusalem. He was determined now, he understood the time of his death had come. And so he makes his way to Jerusalem. He enters in that triumphal entry on Palm Sunday, and he steps into the crowd, goes into the temple, and what a week awaits him. He cleanses the temple throws out the money changers. He debates with the scribes and the Pharisees over issues like taxes and Caesar and politics and whose wife is the husband of whom in heaven, all kinds of religious political arguments that are going on between him and those who are opposed to him. He gives the parables of the 10 virgins, of the fig tree, of the talents, of the wicked vine dressers, He's speaking. He's causing things to happen. Jesus it seems that he's creating a controversy. He's pulling things to himself and just determined to set a certain course in a certain pattern. He is in control of all the circumstances wherever he is.
What must he have felt? He was not a man without emotion. He pronounces woes upon the scribes and Pharisees seven times. And then he laments over Jerusalem and says, how I weep over you, Jerusalem. Jesus felt things very deeply in this season. And then it was the time for the Passover. And Jesus tells his disciples, go and prepare a table for the Passover. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your hands. And from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will see of the goodness So the Passover meal is prepared, and it's at this point in the storyline in all the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke take a full third of their Gospel to unfold these days from Thursday to Sunday. John takes half of his Gospel to unfold these days. Clearly, this moment in time is the peak moment, the part they really want to get across as we read the Gospels. And so Jesus says, with great longing, I have longed to have this meal with you. Now, this is the Passover meal. This is where, if you get a grasp of it, you realize God is an incredible storyteller, and he is intentional on how he wants to line things up. So Jesus picks this Passover meal, which goes all the way back to Israel in captivity in Egypt. 
when the plagues are coming and the angel of death comes and Moses tells the people of Israel, put blood over the doorpost and the angel of death will pass over you and be prepared to exit, to march into freedom. At that first Passover meal in Moses' day in Egypt, they killed the sacrificial lamb. They spread the blood. And now, in this very moment, Jesus is revealing the pinnacle of what that sign was all about when he sits with his disciples and says, a new covenant I bring to you. He is that sacrificial lamb. His blood is going to be shed. And death is going to pass over all those who are in Christ. It's a pretty dramatic picture that God is telling if you follow the story along the way. So Jesus sits with his disciples, and there's a whole lot that goes on even in that evening. He breaks bread with them, which we'll do a little bit later on. And while he's having his meal, he says, one of you will betray me. The disciples say, this is the part that confounds me. Is it I? Is it I? Is it I? I think, wouldn't they know if they were going to betray him? Jesus says, it's the one who dips the bread with me. He'll betray me. And that person was Judas. As the evening goes on, they're sitting around. The disciples have an argument about who is the greatest of them all. Jesus gives them a bit of a lesson. He stands up from the table, puts a towel around his waist, and he washes their feet. That's something no master, no Lord would do. That's the function of a lowly slave. And Jesus says, if I, your Lord and master, have done this to you, so do this to one another. He was showing them a different way altogether. He says, this night, all of you are going to abandon me. Peter stands up and says, though all abandon you, I will never abandon you. And Jesus tells him, oh, Peter, this night, you will deny me three times. Jesus knew what was going on in that evening. How did his heart feel? The weight of this moment in time and history in his life. He came into the world for this moment to die on the cross for the sin of all mankind. His heart was heavy. His heart was resolved. He knew what was coming. He was preparing himself. And yet he drew his disciples in all of their still ignorance and not getting the pieces, he drew them to himself. From there, he went out to the garden and he prayed. It says he he sweated drops of blood in the anguish of his praying. It said his disciples fell asleep a number of times, even as he woke them. And then... The betrayer in the crowd and the mob comes up to him. Judas kisses him on the cheek. Jesus says, you betray me with a kiss? They come with clubs and swords and ready for a fight. Jesus says, I've been here all along. Why didn't you take me? And then they take him off. They bind his hands. They slap him around on the face. They begin to mock him. They're going to have their way with him. The evening is late. The evening is long. They just kind of were abusive all night long until Friday morning when they present him before Herod and Pilate.
So now we're going to partake of communion. And I'll read from the account that Luke gives in his gospel. And when the hour had come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. Then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. 
Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this, divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. He took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you. As often as you do these things, remember me. Jesus took that bread, broke it, held it before them. This is his body, broken for us, for the sin of mankind, for our redemption. Let us eat. And likewise, he took the cup and he blessed it. He said, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of your sin. This is the blood of Christ. Let us drink. Let's pray. Lord, as we enter into these upcoming days, I pray that you would draw us into the events as they unfolded. May we take pause even in our busy schedules, in the hecticness of life itself, and give consideration as to what these days are all about. These days are the pinnacle of all history, of all creation, of all mankind. How easily we overlook them and get busy. So I pray, Lord, would you draw us into this season, into these days, and cause us to reflect upon what it is that you have done, and what you have suffered, and what you've done for us. I pray, Lord, that we would be a people who are transformed as we consider these things. To the glory of your name, amen. So I want to encourage us as we finish out this day, Holy Thursday, and enter into Good Friday. We have a Good Friday service as well. We have an Easter sunrise service as well as the Easter celebrations sat Sunday morning. But let's give attention. I encourage you to read the scriptures that speak about the events that take place. Let your heart meditate upon what it is that Jesus has done. His death was for us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
Hi.